Hello, uh, greetings, viewers of Countdown. Uh, Carol, unless you've anything to say, I'm going to read something here. Yes, please. Is it nice? This is quite nice, actually. In fact, it's entitled, Richard's One Saving Grace. Ooh. Let's discover what it is. They complain of your jackets and ties and your old jokes that bring only sighs. They make fun of your hair, and I don't think it's fair. There has to be something that's nice. <laughs> But let me dispel all your fears before they reduce you to tears. There's one thing you've got that the others have not. Ah. Your beautifully flat little ears. <laughs> <laughs> let's see them. Well, I've never off. noticed that, actually. Go on, let's have... No, no, oh, look at that profile. Well, they don't stick out much, do they? No. Never People having... pay money to have those pinned back, you know. Who has? People pay money to have them pinned back. They don't. They do. Terry Wogan's got very sticky out ones, hasn't he? Has he really? I think so. Thank you very much indeed. That was Carol Ford of Preston. Thank you. Uh, my little flat little ears. I think that's, that's really that's, that's quite touching. <laughs> I'll try and use them today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like listen. I'll be all ears. I'll be all ears listening to, to everyone <clears throat> speaking, especially our champion. The words of wisdom from our brand new champion, Roger Ordish, and indeed especially from our challenger today, Joyce Dunkley. Welcome, Roger and Joyce. Uh, well, Roger, welcome back to you. Uh, good performance uh, yesterday. Uh, another round, and you might not have done it, actually, because he was I, creeping I was, up, wasn't he? Yeah. Young Des Hussey. Uh, he was uh, well behind the end of part one and almost 20 points end of uh, the second half, but 82 to 88 did it, so it was a bit of a nail-biter at the end. So, <laughs> so there's Roger, freelance uh, video producer from Lewis, but former... Uh, BBC television producers for some of the great... Who else did you produce behind besides Jimmy Savile? Uh, Bruce Forsyth, Terry Wogan. <laughs> ah. Should I stand? And uh, Parkinson. All the greats, all yeah. the greats. Now you're with Whiteley here. Yes. And Kirkstall Road Leaf. That it, that it should come to this, Roger. <laughs> but life is cruel, life is cruel. However, um, as long as you're enjoying yourself, old man. I certainly am. Good, OK. Keeping you out of the pub, isn't it? That's right. All right. <laughs> Now, Joyce Dunkley from Market Harborough uh, in uh, Leicestershire, uh, retired and enjoying... Is it safe you're married? Are you married or not? Never. No. <laughs> it's a pity. I thought you might have uh, married someone called Hobson. Why so? Oh, Hobson's Joyce. Then you'd have been Hobson's Joyce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were ahead of me on that one. <laughs> uh, mind you, I have told it before. <laughs> she likes gardening and writing poetry. In fact, she's had seven books of verse published. Uh, with all the proceeds going to charity. She travels around the uh, nation giving talks on weather forecasting and just from nature's law. Uh, so you look at all the signs of nature, the twigs and the birds and so on, tell the weather. Now, today's forecast, though, is bright spells once the pun breaks through, <laughs> followed by the end of the reigning champion. So oh. that is Joyce Dunkley. Good luck to you, Joyce. Thank you. Last time, our G of the D came up with a six-letter winner, Vault. Well, they're ready to leap into action and set to spring a few more surprises, so I felt bound to ask them back again. Here they are, Richard Sampson and Thelma Barlow. Hello there. Thank you. So, Thelma, when you get back and they say, what do you think about Countdown, you'll say, I love it. Because, look, they're both wearing love it. No. Yes, Symphony and love it. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Sure, There's sure got can... to be an end to all this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be out of it by Friday. <laughs> OK, Roger. Consonant, please, Carol. We start then with R. And another. And another one. V. And another. C. And a fourth. M. And a vowel, please. I. And another. A. And another. E. And, an, another, and a consonant, please. S. And another vowel. And that, Roger, is O. Ah, okay. oh, so here we go.
then, Roger. Six. Yes. <coughs> Joyce? Six. Joyce is six. Scream. Scream, Roger. Varies. Varies. We have there for six. Thelma. Um, so we've got ovaries and... There is a nice eight there. Oh. In a different vein. <laughs> which is varicose. Uh, oh, varicose. Uh, varicose. Now. <laughs> yes, varicose. Oh. And that wonderful line from your friend Jean Alexander, of course, Hilda Ogden, who once said, I've got very coarse veins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You've got a good memory. <laughs> oh, a classic line, yes. <laughs> right, six and six. Joyce to go, please. Consonant, please, Carol. Thank you, Joyce. G. And another one, please. D. And another. R. And one more, please. And L. And a vowel. A. And another one. I. And another one. E. One more, please. E. And a final consonant, please. Thank you. T. OK, starting the clock. Yes, Joyce. Seven. Right. And Roger. Risky seven. Yeah, the risky one. It's glared. G L A I R E D. Okay, glared with an I. Joyce. Trailed. Well, glared. G L A I R is in the dictionary. It's a it's a glue made from egg white, but it's only a noun, and you can't put it into the past tense. I'm sorry. So I can't allow it. But, but we do have an eight-letter word: retailed. Retailed. Mm. Hey, you've sold it to us. Retailed. <laughs> Very good. So, Retail. scores then. There it is. Ah, uh, 6 and 13. Good. Uh, Roger, letters for you. Consonant, please, Carol. Thank you. P. And another. N. And another. R. And a fourth. And D. And a vowel, please. A. And another. I. And another. O. And a fourth vowel, please. U. And a fifth vowel, please. And another vowel. Thank you, Roger. A. Well, five vowels there. Thank you. Then, Roger. Five. Five for Roger. Joyce. Five for me. Yes, right. Joyce is five. Piano. Piano. Roger. Apron. An apron. It's also got strings, I suppose. <laughs> 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 yes, Lola. Well, this is going to make you what it is paranoid. <laughs> oh. Ah, yeah, good. That's paranoid. That's good. For eight. For eight. For eight. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, that's huge, isn't it? Paranoid for eight. Well eight. done. We, we struggled with the five here. So, uh, 18 and 11. Joyce. Consonant, please. Thank you. T. And another one, please. S. And another. L. And a vowel, please. I. And another. E. And another. U. And another. E. And a consonant. M. And another consonant, please. And P. OK, we start the clock.
And now then, Joyce. Seven. Yes. Roger. Seven. Roger, seven. Epistle. Epistle? Ah, that's nice, because this is all about letters, this game. Epistle is nice. Joyce? Impulse. An impulse. Both wow. good. Very good. Yeah. Epistle and impulse for the seven. Thelma? Um, how about lumpiest? <laughs> Does it have lumpiest? Yes, an ugly lumpiest. word, but it's an eight. So very good. Lumpiest is there for eight. There's also another seven in temples, but lumpiest wins. Yes. Yeah. Lumpiest. Limp oh, no, it's not enough. Yeah. OK, well, we like lumpiest, but we like these two as well. 18 and 25. Now, Mr Roger Audish, Miss Carol Vorderman is waiting for your command. Uh -huh. uh, your choice, please, Carol. Thank you very much. One from the top, then. Thank goodness. The usual. That. And we have ten and eight, one and nine, six and one hundred, and a target of five hundred and nineteen. Yeah, five hundred and nineteen. Five one nine. Five one nine, then Roger. Five one nine. Good, Joyce. Five one nine. Right, Joyce. Well, you're the newcomer, so here you go. A hundred times five. How do you make the five? Is five hundred? Yes. How do you make the oh, five? Oh, six minus one. Sorry, yeah. Carol. It's five hundred. And then nine plus ten. Absolutely right. Add them on. Yes, Roger. It's the same. Six minus one is five. Five times one hundred is five hundred plus ten plus nine. Yep. Yeah. It yes. strikes me. Carol, that uh, yes. recently all these chappies coming on this programme yes. are giving you an easy time because they're all saying your choice. One from Carol. The top, you were always choice one, one from, the, from top. the top. So I think people who come on this programme the next few days should make things a bit more difficult for, for her. Because the last is having it easy and she likes you like a challenge, don't you? To be fair, Carol. I do like a challenge, but I also like, to, like an easy time every now and again. <laughs> don't we all? Okay, well, 10 points for all, so that's very nice. 28 and 35. We hand over to you, Thelma. Well, it's a um, little bit of talk about gardening again. And uh, I've got three poems for you this time, two little ones, and then finally the reward of gardening. But just to explain that um, I think gardening teaches you an awful lot. And some of the things it teaches you, one is patience. You have to wait for the things to grow. And another one is observation. You have to keep a good eye on it. And then there's caring. And if you kept a good eye on it, you'll see if things are, plants are doing well. And if they look a bit sick, well, you have to nurture them a little bit, make sure they're fed well, they're kept warm and looked after. It's also taught me not to be squeamish. And um, now I can crunch off the green fly and I can pick up worms. And I don't mind spiders in the garden. I hate them at home, but I don't mind them <laughs> in the garden. And those of you who are gardeners will actually know that occasionally you have to put up with a few odd smells in the garden, particularly if you like to get a load in manure, as I do. But I, I've decided that's my friend and I'm going to like it. But there was a little poem I wrote oh, some time ago, which is explaining that. I always experienced a whiff of distaste when anyone mentioned animal waste. But since I have gardened, much worse words are pardoned I'd repeat them, but frankly, I'm far too shamefaced. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one I wrote when I lived in Scotland, when my children were young. And I was trying to teach them that we shouldn't be using all these chemicals on the garden. And uh, I have to say this in a Scottish accent, because that's when I wrote it. <laughs> it's embedded in my head in that way. At the bottom of our garden, beneath a big grey stone, a lot of wiggly woodlice lived. They'd made that place their home. But Daddy came along today and with a puff and squirt of something deadly killed the lot. Now all that's left is dirt. And that's so very true if we keep pouring chemicals on the garden. But finally there's a reward at the end of the day when you're absolutely jiggered and you come in aching in every bone and muscle. And it's this. 
I've worked in the garden since dawn. It's now dusk and there's dozens of things left to do. I've been digging and hoeing and seeding and sowing and planting delphiniums blue. But I've watered the garden now, cleaned up the tools. My nails are all torn, my back's chronic. The answer is simply a lemon, a dimply glass, some ice, and a large gin and tonic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, yeah, I bet you're glad you came in from the garden now to watch Countdown. You see, a lot of you have now come in at quarter past four from the garden and you've been treated to this uh, very good uh, first half. Uh, and it hasn't ended yet because we now move on to our tea time teaser, the first one. Heat car is the word we're looking at. Heat car. And uh, the dictic clue is from the neck down. <laughs> Countdown, sponsored by Kellogg's All Brand. Problem solved. Heat car, not a heat car named Desire, no, a heat car which you get to trachea, trachea from the neck down. From the neck up, of course, you get rather nice little flat ears, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed, perhaps, over the years, perhaps. Over the ears. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah to, uh, to what Thelma said in uh, part one. Here we are now, 28 with Roger and uh, 35 to Joyce. And it's uh, Joyce's choice. Consonant, please, Carol. C. And another, please. G. Another. T. And one more, please. And B. And a vowel? I. And another? A. And another? O. And another? E. And a consonant to finish? And H. OK, thank you. Starting clock. Only five. OK, Roger. Five as well. OK, Roger's five. Bitch. Yep, bitch. Joyce? Bite. B-I-G-H-T. Oh, bite, as in the, yeah. as in the great... Uh, what is it? Some geography. In it's the a sea. geography term, yes. Bite is a bite. Yeah. The, the great, great Australian bite. bite. The oh, great yes. Australian bite, yes. <laughs> Not by a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> no, this bite and bitch. Yes. yes. Um, well, I don't know if biotech which is an abbreviation, is that accepted? Yeah, if you're a contestant, you'd think that was a really risky one, but it's absolutely there. Biotech is there for seven. And so, funnily enough, is the word ice boat. Oh. Ice boat for seven. One that I wasn't expecting to see, but it's all oh. one word. It's, for, it's got runners and it, a sail and it travels on ice. OK. Right, well, points for all there, so 33 and 40, Roger. Consonant, please, Carol. R. And another. S. And a third. D. And a fourth. K. And a vowel, please. I. And another vowel. E. And another. A. And a consonant. F. And another consonant, please. And N. Right, uh, right. Yes, Roger. Seven. Okay. Joyce? Seven. Joyce, seven. Frisked. 
Frisk, Roger. Friends. Friends. Frisked. Frisked. Um, I don't think we can do better than seven, can we? We can match it. Match it. Sardine is there for seven, and also franked. Franked. Yeah. OK. Seven. Well, seven it is, everybody. Forty and forty-seven. Three rounds to go in this half. Joyce's letters. Consonant, please, Carol. Mm -hmm. G. And another. L. And another. T. And another. M. And a vowel. U. And another. O. And another. A. One more, please. E. And a consonant. And D. OK, I'm starting the clock. Right, Joyce. Six. Yes, Roger. Seven. Six it is. Malted. Malted. Mm, yes. Malted, yes. Yes, Roger. Gloated. Mm. And gloated. Right, malted, gloated. Very good. Very good. Mm. Um, what modulate? Is there for eight? Is there for eight? Yes. Yeah, Which yeah. exerts a modifying influence. Yep, modulate <laughs> for eight. Okay. <laughs> Roger's just seen that. Have you, Roger? Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> The big under-the-table <coughs> kick there. Um, <laughs> so, look, modulate. There it is. Lovely word, that. For seven, eight, eight. So, scores then are, well, 47, Joyce, 47, Roger. Roger's letters. Consonant, please, Carol. S. And another. R. And a third. Uh, sorry. N. And a fourth. W. And a vowel, please. U. And a second. O. And a third. E. And a consonant, please. C. And another consonant, please. And S. OK, thank you. Okay, Roger. Six. Yes. Now, Joyce. Seven. Let's do the six, Roger. Cowers. Cowers. Now, Joyce got a seven. Worsens. <laughs> yes, worsens. <laughs> worsens. Uh, is uh, there? And the uh, seven. Mm -hmm. Time to kick yourselves again with an eight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unscrews. Is there? There it is, unscrews for the eight. <laughs> well, uh, 47 54. So, Joyce, it's, <laughs> it's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> right, two large ones and five small, please. You haven't been influenced by Mr. Squishy, Not at all, have you? No, no, no. Four small? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. We have then seven and eight, nine and six, those are the small ones, obviously. And 25 and 50 from the top row. That is your choice, Joyce. And your target is uh, 866. OK, 866, everybody, 866. Yes, 866, Joyce. No, sorry. OK. Roger. No, too far out. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 
That was a beast, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm two away. Oh. 864. So nobody can get that? No. Can you? Well, <laughs> no, I can't. But then, then, it's not my job, actually. No. My job is just to be the genial host. Yes, and have your ears flat. <laughs> Yeah, actually, you can't even see them. You can't and see cute. them now. Look. Looking yeah. at me now, you can't even see if I've got flat no. ears or sticky out ears. <laughs> and I suppose if I had sticky out ears, like you say, Mr. Wogan has, yeah. cheeky girl, you could see them. But he said he spent a lot of money, has he, on his ears, having been stick No, I haven't said that at all. You've just said that. I never said that. No, he's got big, big ears, though, hasn't he? <laughs> big ears? I don't know. I believe so. I don't know. You can't tell on the radio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And he has earphones over them the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> his ears never escape. They don't get out much. <laughs> have to watch him on his webcam. <laughs> right, here we are. Tea time teaser. Refutal is the word. Refutal, that's the base word. Looks like it's a word in its own right. Refutal. And uh, the clue, the dictic clue, is eyes well that ends well. <laughs> Countdown, sponsored by Kellogg's All Brand. Problem solved. Yes, well, tearful, of course. Tearful it was. Eyes well that ends well. Of course, you think that's quite a, a cunning dictic clue. And, of course, uh, tearful, your eyes well up, don't they? See, eyes well that ends well. Bit of a Shakespearean illusion, of course, that everyone. So, excellent. Uh, anyone get that round the table here, you two? Roger, did you get that? I didn't, no. No, Joyce? Well, I got falter out of it. Oh. F-A-U-L-T-E-R. Yeah, I, I thought that as well. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't relate to the clue, though. No, I couldn't see the clue. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the, back to the main game. And the main event here. Roger's on 47, Joyce is on 54, and Roger's to go. Consonant, please, Carol. T. And another? L. And a third? P. And a fourth. G. And a vowel, please. A. And a vowel. U. And a vowel. O. And a fourth vowel. I. And a fifth vowel. Another one, Roger. That yeah. is E. Uh, OK, there we go. Roger. Eight. An eight. Sounds good. Joyce. Mine was a risky seven. Well, let's say the risky seven. Glue pot. But here's an eight. A uh, pilotage. Pilotage. Oh, fine. There it is. Pilotage. Pilotage. Oh, Fantastic. Pilot. Very mm. good. Oh, yes. Very good. You're a bit quick on that in the pen care. What does it mean, Mr. Sampson? Um, a bit, a bit, a bit of pilotage. Uh, it's it's a noun derived from piloting a boat or piloting okay, a boat. OK, well, that's a good one. Anything else of any interest to us here? No. no. There's a nice seven there in Gallipot, which Gallipot. has come up before. But um, yes, I think it's good as pilotage. OK, excellent. So, well and right for the eight. That's 47 and eight. 55, 54. Oh, so close. Joyce, letters, please. Consonant, please, Carol. R. And another. V. And another. T. And another. D. And a vowel. E. And another one. A. And another one. O. And another one. A. And a consonant, please. And N. OK. Counting down.
well, Joyce. Five. Yes, five. Roger. Five. Five, Roger. Raven. The Raven himself, his horse. Yes, uh, Joyce. Tread. T R E A D. Tread and Raven. Uh, yes, we have one I should know. Verdant. Yes. Meaning green with grass and vegetables, <laughs> absolutely. There's another nice seven, novated, which is a legal term. So a couple of sevens there. OK, fine. Two sevens there. So, looking at the scoreboard, we have 60 and 59, and we have the last letters game from Roger. Consonant, please, Carol. S. And another. Z. And a third, please. From <laughs> groans and that kind of stuff. Y. <laughs> and a fourth. I'm allowed to groan now. M. And a fifth. F. Oh, <laughs> good grief. And a vowel, please. <laughs> Just need the J now, and that'd be uh, time to go home, I think. E. And, a, and another vowel. U. And a third vowel. O. And a consonant, please. And a consonant. L. And counting down. Now, Roger. Risky six. Risky six, Joyce? A safe five. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a safe five. Mules. Mules, Roger. Flumes, F L U M E S. An artificial channel conveying water typically used for transporting logs or timber. As in log flume. Very good. So you had your book open already at that, did you, Richard? <laughs> you must have known it was going to come. Yeah. yeah. It counted it. your bones. Flumes. There's also myself, which is another six. And um, a word that cropped up not that long ago for seven, fulsome. Fulsome. Yes. Mm. Well done. Fulsome. Is there. Thanks, <laughs> Carol. Off to your board you go, because Joyce is raring to go. Well, I'm still going to have two large ones and four <sighs> small ones. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I hope it's nicer for you this time, Joyce. Not that I have any influence on it at all. Unfortunately, <laughs> ten and seven, four and four, seventy-five this time and twenty-five again, oh, yeah. and a target of six hundred and thirty-six. Okay, six three six. Everybody, six three six. Yeah, well, 636 then, Joyce. 645. Well, that's nine away. OK, in with a chance. Nine away, 645, Roger. No, 656. Six. 20 away. Mm. OK, you're out of it. So 645, let's have a go at that. 75 minus 4 plus 4. So minus 4, so you're taking 8 away, Taking yes? 8 away. 67. Multiplying it by 10. 670. And adding on the... Uh, taking away the 25. Taking away the 20 is 645. Which is what you declared. You could yes. have taken the 7 away as well to get slightly closer. But, uh, yeah, 645 is still within uh, points scoring. Yes, OK, yes, so it's five points for her. What about this 636? Six, six, well, it's this two from the top, you see, that gets me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder whose silly idea that was. Yes, you see, you just... Joyce... Don't do it again, you see. I All mean, right. you're confusing the whole nation here. No, I mean, you know, nation. <laughs> Grants or hogs, no one can do it. She can't do it, no one can do it. Any other ones can do it? Yeah, no one. <laughs> right, uh, anyway, so keep working, Carol. I will. And we'll be back uh, with you at the end of the programme. Meanwhile, 66 and 64, and we have uh, the crucial conundrum. So the pressure's on, even though it's lowish scores. Here we go. But here we go. Please now reveal today's crucial countdown conundrum. And you say, Joyce, 
Nominated. Nominated. Well, I'm afraid yep. you are nominated once again to appear on Countdown. <laughs> because it is. <laughs> Here she is, champion of Countdown, Joyce Dunkley. Well done, Joyce. <laughs> oh dear, what a game, what a game. Poor old Roger. Uh, didn't, quite, didn't, get it, didn't get that one. Absolutely not. Okay, no, well, it was a confusing numbers game, but anyway. Roger, king for a day. Loved it. King for a day. I know you've loved it. Mm. I know you've enjoyed it. So we have to rush, really, but uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, all our goodie bags for you. Uh, things to the goodie bag. Thanks very much indeed to a good chap, Roger Audish. Bye bye. So we must rush. Mike Brown. Mike Brown from Kings Lynn. Did you get the conundrum, Mike? No, I didn't. But did I they get 636, six, Mike? I did, and they got the other numbers game as well. Nah, that's what we like. Are you going to have two from the top tomorrow again? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have four, I think, knowing Mike. Anyway, that's it. So good. I don't know if I do Mike, but uh, what he says. OK, thank you. Thank you, you two. Thank you, you two. Thank you. Thank you. That's the answer. While you look at it, little ode to Richard's ears. Dick's ears are the best. They are cute day and night. There's no doubt they should always be seen. There's one on the left and one on the right. But the big question yes. is what's in between? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And if you can do better than that, write to us, countdown at channel4.com or write to us at countdown Yorkshire TV. Let us find us. Thank you very much indeed. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>